I would say we've had a successful hatch. Good morning. Welcome to the world. My goodness, I can't even count them all. These are Texas A&M quail babies. I wish the lighting was a little better, but oh my goodness, aren't they cute? Now, if I open that lid, <laughs> they are going to come flying out of there. So, I think I'll have to carry these guys in and put them in their new aquarium and then open the lid. And then you can go free. Yes. Oh, how cute. Those guys. Hi. Hello, I'm your mama. Hello. <laughs> Look at them. They're like, something's moving. Let's go after it. Oh, little tiny raptors. <laughs> Cute. So how many babies do you think we eventually hatched? <laughs> well, we've counted between 17 and 18. They are now about three days old. Let me see if I can get my camera in there without scaring them all to death. And uh, if you'll notice, there's one in here that doesn't look the same. Can you see it? Can you spot it? Where's Waldo? We're going to call him Waldo, or I'm hoping it's Waldina. But, uh, yeah, one chick hatched, and she's in here with the quail. <laughs> and, boy, do they eat a lot, guys. They are just eating me out of house and home. Aren't they cute? You're pecking at Waldina. That's not nice. Poor Waldina. She says, I have no idea what these brothers and sisters of mine are. I'll just stand up. That way they can't peck me. <laughs> Good girl, Waldina. Hope you're a girl. All right, guys. <laughs> hope you enjoyed that. And uh, more to come, I hope. Actually, yeah, here's my two females. That's all I had left for my quail. And you notice how beat up they look? Well, that's my fault because I had three males in here with two girls, and that's just too much. And you'll notice I have gotten rid of two of the males. I managed to uh, get someone to come take them. Yeah, sorry, girls. Give you a little bit of a break now. This uh, leads me to wanting to talk about quail because uh, I had a discussion with a friend of mine the other day, and I said, you know, eggs are getting expensive, guys. And they were like, oh, you know, yeah, I can't afford chickens. And I said, well, what about quail? You could afford quail. Well, what a noise. I can't, I can't stand for more than three minutes. Hang on. Okay, I hope we're recording. Yeah, I cannot stand for more than three minutes. Uh, the pain in my back gets so bad that it, it takes me down. <laughs> All right, continuing on about quail. Um, and they were like, I, I, ooh, quail eggs. I said, have you ever tasted one? And, you know, they didn't answer me. So I'm going to assume the answer is no. <laughs> the same as when I asked my friend Debbie. I said, I think they're putting a Mongolian restaurant in Sedalia. I've heard that rumor. And she was, ooh, I don't like Mongolian. I said, do you know what Mongolian is? No. <laughs> Don't knock it before you try it, guys, okay? Quail are easier to keep than chickens. They take up less room. They're like a little flock. They like being crowded. You can keep them in a small area. They uh, are flighty and they fly, but as long as you got a lid on it or a top, you can keep quail. And they lay an egg a day. Honestly, the most prolific layers I've ever had, uh, way better than chickens. And it takes three quail eggs to equal one chicken egg. Now, as for the taste, you've heard things about duck eggs and goose eggs and things about how strong they are. Quail eggs are milder than a chicken egg to me. Some people say they taste exactly the same as a chicken egg. Um, yeah, I'll go with exactly. Um, but they also, if you look it up on the internet, don't take my word for this, but they have like a better nutritional value. For one thing, you've got more yolk to white ratio. So if you're into whites and beating egg whites, yeah. And another complaint people have is the shells are thick and the 
little membrane inside is heavier. So they're harder to open when you try to crack them. You've really got to get those apart. Luckily, there's a tool for that. And it's called a quail egg cutter. And it is invaluable and it's cheap and they're on Amazon. And you just, if I remember, I will link one below. Don't count on it, guys. I have uh, chemo brains. I probably won't remember when I edit this. But you just clip off the top of that egg and dump it, dump it out. Clip it, dump it, clip it. I highly recommend if you're going to do quail eggs, get a quail egg cutter. And uh, although Mother says with her fingernails she has no trouble opening them. <laughs> if you got dagger thumbnails, yeah. Um, so what else about quail eggs? I mean, they're, they make a cute sound. Little birds themselves, they trill and they crow and they make all kinds of cute noises. Um, they're not as friendly as chickens. There's a downside. Whereas chickens can become like a pet and they'll run to you and like to be hugged and cuddled and petted and some of them do, some don't. But chickens can be a very uh, interesting pet. Quail, not so much. They're not very smart. Which leads me to the other good thing about quail, in my opinion, is because you don't get close to them and they're not very intelligent you don't mind eating them, and they're delicious. Um, they are easy to process. Let's use that word. Um, I particularly do not like uh, killing them. So if I find me someone who will do that, they're easy to dress out. Literally, their feathers and skin just fall off. They are easy to eviscerate. Um, yeah, look that word up. <laughs> And um, and they're delicious. The meat is delicious. So if you get too many uh, males, you know. Now, I should have consumed my two males. I've thought about it, but I've got no one around here lately to uh, do the deed for me. And I just can't bring myself to do it, even though it's quick and easy. I just, I am a weenie. You may comment below about how awful a person I am, I know. Uh, but um, yes, quail. Highly recommend if you can't afford chickens and you don't have the space and you don't like egg prices. Highly recommend quail. Um, so, if you have any other questions about quail, I mean, you can look it up on the internet. There's all kinds of good information about the nutritional quality of quail eggs and uh, and everything else. I love adding them to my chicken eggs because it just kind of rich and makes everything <laughs> is rich in a word. Sounds like a real rich in word. Not a word. Uh, it, it just makes them, I think, a little more hearty, a little more yolky. And they're wonderful. I have a friend who has all the patients in the world that I do not. And she doubles them, and she takes them to church, and they're just a little perfect bite, like a canapé. And um, I particularly don't have the patience to hard boil and sit there and peel all those tiny eggs. <laughs> not, not my kind of thing. Uh, I don't like doing tedious things either. Anybody who's watched my show for a long time knows I don't like tedious stuff. Like someone recommended for me to do dot art with these tiny dots, and you put, oh, Kill me now. Lord, oh, that would be so annoying. But I'm still searching for something to keep me busy now that I've got my uh, camera back, uh, which is my old camera. I'm going to get a new camera. And Kathy, who uh, sent me the camera and the computer, and more importantly, the editing program, um, we're sending that camera back. She said, UPS will pick it up at my house. Really? I've always had to drive 30 miles to the UPS store to take things back. I never had them pick up anything at my house. I'm really excited about this. She said, pick it up tomorrow. So we're going to box it up. I'm going to put a big sign on it that says, this UPS, this is the return. Because if they knock on my door and UPS is always in a hurry, they don't want to talk to you, nothing. They're up and they're out. I think they've only got like 60 seconds to deliver a package or something. Anyway, they don't want to talk to you either, so don't talk to them. I had friends that worked at UPS. And it's like, don't, don't, just 60 seconds to deliver and run. Um, I can't get out of my chair in 60 seconds. So by the time they would knock or I would know they were here, 
you know, and by the time I, they would be gone. So I'm going to box it back up, all right here, and I'm going to put a sign on it and put it by the front door so when they come they can see it and hopefully this will work. Fingers crossed. Technology has never worked for me. Got a call from the palliative doctor today and since they don't work anymore on the day I'm there, they want to do these FaceTime calls. Well, as you all know, the last time we tried a FaceTime call, I kept my phone with me all day long. They were supposed to call at 2 p.m. And I carried the phone and I said to Pam, do not let me get away from my phone. Don't let me set it down. Nothing. I, I have ordered a carrier, like for a, my arm, so that I can put the phone in it on my arm and keep it with me because I can't have it hanging around my neck. It bothers my neck and I've got a swelling here anyway from the cancer and I will take it off. So and sit it down and heavens knows where. Anyway, I'm hoping the arm thing works. It falls out of my pockets or it pulls my pants off of me. Y'all ever put your phone in your pocket and you're walking along and your pants are getting lower and lower and you're trying to pull your pants. You look like one of those hip hop guys who walks around holding the front of his pants up, you know. Uh, that's me with a cell phone in my pocket. So I, pockets don't work. And <laughs> here's hoping the armband for holding the phone on work. Someone needs to come up with something for old people. Anyway, I had the phone on me. Of course, we were in the car. We got out of the car at noon, and I walked away from the car for about 10 minutes, and I remembered, and I said, oh my, unlock the car, unlock the car. I've locked my phone in the car. And when we opened the car back up, you're not going to believe this, but missed call from the palliative doctor. Yep, yep, yep. I, I still think they have a program, and it says, She's with her phone, do not call now. She's with it, she has it, she has it. She's away from the phone, she's in the bathroom, call now! Yeah. And uh, that's when they called. So they did, they called me today, I answered the phone, and they were like, yeah, we want to do a FaceTime call on like the 6th of March at 9 a.m. And I thought, well, at least I won't be carrying the phone with me all day, waiting for a phone call at 2, and then they call at noon. Um, so, I have never gotten my phone to answer a FaceTime call. They did try a trial run with me while I was at the hospital and it did ring through. And after several times of swiping, 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 we got it to answer while I was sitting there with them. But no guarantee when I'm alone that's going to work. So, yep. And I just told her to call me in the morning. I'll set an alarm and I'll get up and I'll, I won't have to wait too long. And uh, hopefully, they will call and hopefully the phone answers. And I I guess it's got to be face to face because they want to make sure it's me. I don't know. So that's going on. Um, and really by March 6th, I sh I'm going to have had a PET scan again. So we'll know if the cancer is spreading further and how far it has spread and what we're going to do about it. I also have an appointment in there somewhere to go see a, a hip bone doctor. And they said, this guy's a surgeon. And I've had five different doctors tell me I can't be operated. I need a hip replacement, but because of the stage four cancer, they can't operate on me. So what do you think, guys? If a surgeon says to me, yeah, I can operate on you, do you take one guy's opinion or five others? And they've never given me a reason other than mom thinks it's because it might spread the cancer. But they've never said that to me. They've never said, we can't operate because it'll spread the cancer. We can't operate because you're too weak. We can't operate because it'll kill you. We can't operate because your insurance isn't good enough and we don't want to, you don't have enough time left and we don't want to waste the time and money on you. <laughs> you know, that's the one I think, but they, they haven't said. So that's the update on the cancer. Um, I'm past the nausea stage. We've got about a week to go back before chemo, so this is my good week. And I just wanted to update you on the chicks, the quail. I'm really excited about having some babies in the house. That was a lot of fun. And I really love that new incubator. Um, basically, it's a bubble type with the motor on top. You've seen it in my videos. This is it right here. It says it's a smart incubator. I don't know. It's never talked to me, so we don't know how smart it is. But those uh, one egg hatched out of three, and those others are not going to hatch. But I really like this design. And I like that this thing, um, it rotates and it, it rolls the eggs. And it wasn't that expensive. It was like $66 on Amazon. So uh, there's a bunch of them. So um, 
Yeah, that's the incubator I like. I like because it blows the air from the top. And uh, the others had motors in the ends or when you tried to wash them afterwards, you, know, you couldn't get the electronics wet. And uh, so I think from now on that's, that's the type of incubator. It was inexpensive. We don't know how many times it's going to work. Um, I guess it was around $66, $56, I think you can pick some up. And it would hold 12 eggs, it said, chicken eggs. But I had well over 25 quail eggs in it, and uh, 20 or so of them hatched. And then we have 17 to 18 living. Uh, everybody counts different. <laughs> Rick counts 17, Sheila counted 18. I don't know. I counted 14, but I'm terrible with math. So there you go. All right, guys, that's my update. Like, share, and subscribe to keep up with the insanity. I just wanted to do a little talk about quail and how uh, I think the eggs are cheaper, better, quicker uh, as far as an egg. Well, it is an egg. It's not a substitute. It's an egg, and it tastes like an egg. Uh, so if you don't have room for chickens, you might want to consider that. All right, talk to you later, guys. Love you all. Thank you, Kathy, again. And I will get this outside with a note on it for the UPS man. Hopefully this works. Bye-bye.